Hello, everyone. This is Harp and Mora, and we're here bringing you our Qlips English Learning Podcast. And don't forget to check out our website, Qlips.com. That's C-U-L-I-P-S dot com. And there you can check out so much that we have to offer at Qlips, including becoming a member. And when you're a member, you have access to the transcripts for all our episodes, more detailed explanations of the words and expressions we use, and even a little quiz to test yourself after you've listened. Definitely. And also make sure to check out our Facebook page. There is a lot of fun stuff going on there. We post pictures. We have lots of fun conversations going on. Yeah, it's where we get to hear from you and we can talk back to you. I love going on Facebook and having little conversations with the listeners. Yeah, and hearing all the nice comments. Yeah, I mean, who doesn't like nice comments? <laughs> all right, well, today we're bringing you a Chatterbox episode. And that's where we chat. We pick a topic about something maybe in the news or a cultural topic. Sometimes we interview people and basically we chat about it. Right. But before we get started, I want to say, if my voice sounds a bit strange, I have a bit of a frog in my throat. I've been sick off and on a lot this winter. I hope it goes away soon. I hope so too. Yeah, I don't like it. So if you have any secret remedies, let me know. All right. So today we're going to talk about multiculturalism and this topic was suggested to us by one of our listeners and he was curious about multiculturalism in canada and really what is it like here and how does it work and he wanted to know about it so we're gonna chat about that yeah we're gonna start with talking about our own identities and then we're gonna talk about different cultures in canada Right, and kind of the policy of multiculturalism that we have here. Exactly. So first we're going to talk about ourselves because Harp and I are both Canadian, but like most Canadians, we have a family background and many Canadians have different stories. Yep. Maura, what's your family background? Tell us your story. Well... My father's side of my family is originally from Ireland. Now, as far as I know, it was a few hundred years ago that my relatives came to Canada. Oh, wow. Long time. Yeah. For Canadian standards. <laughs> yeah. It's true, though, because not many Canadians have families that have been in Canada for that long and it's funny for other people because maybe a few hundred years doesn't seem like a long time but like you said Hart by Canadian standards it's long yeah definitely Canada's a new country so right of course the natives who were here before any of the Europeans or people from many of the other countries they've been here the longest but like I said my dad's family came from Ireland a few hundred years ago and my dad's family is actually from Prince Edward Island, which is on the east coast of Canada. And it's a very, very small province. It's a little island. And people might know it because of Anne of Green Gables. That's a famous story. Yeah. So your dad's family came from Ireland and settled in Prince Edward Island. Yep. And then your grandparents moved to the Kitchener area? Right. Because Prince Edward Island is small there's maybe not as much opportunity for jobs and things like that so my grandparents moved to Kitchener Ontario and then my family grew up there okay my mother's side of my family is a bit more complicated really tell us about it well my grandparents are Polish and I think that I heard my grandfather is like half Ukrainian maybe or something, but I don't really know. And Poland and the Ukraine are pretty close together and the cultures are similar, so I'm not sure all of the details. So I usually just say that I'm half Polish. Okay. And your grandparents were the first to come to Canada or your mom? Well, actually, both of my grandparents were born in Canada. Okay. Yeah, my grandfather, by chance, was actually born in Montreal, which is a funny coincidence because now we're here. Very cool. And my grandmother's story is a bit more complicated. 
She was born in Canada too, but she actually grew up in Poland until she was 17. So your great grandparents came to Canada and then went back to Poland? I know it's a really particular situation, but when my great grandparents were going to have children, they would come to Canada and have their children here so that their children would be Canadian citizens and that whenever they wanted, they could have the opportunity to come live here. Did they come here multiple times? Yes. Yeah, my grandmother and both of her brothers were all Canadian citizens, I believe. Okay, so they came each time just to have the kid in Canada. Yeah. And then they would go back to Poland. Yes. <laughs> wow. I know, it's quite funny. I don't know all the details really either, but that's the story. So my grandmother lived there until she was 17, and then uh, the war started to happen there. So she left and came to Canada. She came by herself, and my great-grandparents stayed in Poland. But like many immigrants to Canada, they knew people here. So when my grandmother arrived, she had some people to stay with and to help establish herself. That's a very typical immigrant story where family or friends help. Yes. Um, she went to Hamilton, Ontario, which is not very far from Toronto. And that's actually a place with a lot of new immigrants. And a lot of people go there when they first come to Canada. Interesting. Yeah. So she eventually learned to speak English. It's funny because growing up, I never once thought that my grandmother had an accent. Really? <laughs> yeah. And then I think I was in my 20s and someone said that to me, that my grandmother had an accent. And I was very surprised and shocked because I just grew up with her speaking that way. And so I never, ever really could hear the accent. So interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So that's my story. My mother went to Polish school when she was young and she learned a little bit of Polish, but by the time I was born, now it's kind of sad because me and my sisters only know a few words in Polish and we practice some Polish traditions, mostly Polish food. And that's about it. Yeah, food is something that stays, I find. <laughs> that is true. But it is sad how some of the language and culture and traditions disappear the longer that a family has been in Canada. Yeah, that's definitely true. Mm -hmm. So what about you, Harp? Let's hear your story. My story. Well, my family has been in Canada for a much shorter time. My dad came to Canada from India in 1976 and he was sponsored by one of his uncles. So he came to Canada and he went to Toronto and tried to find a job there. And he went to Vancouver and tried to find a job there. And then eventually ended up in Fort St. John, BC. Which is in the middle of nowhere, if I'm allowed to say that. In the middle of nowhere, very far north. <laughs> and he settled there and he started working. And then he eventually wanted to get married. So he went back to India and he got married to my mom and they came to Canada together in 79. And for my family, my sisters and I were second generation Canadians because my parents are Canadians as well now. And Right. So in Canada, we use that a lot. First generation, second generation. And first generation means you're the first people in your family to be Canadian. And then second generation... You're the next generation to be Canadian. That's why, like you said, Harp, you're second generation. Yeah, exactly. So I was born in northern BC and, and I'm a Canadian. So as I said, with my family story, a lot of the tradition and language and culture gets lost. How has it been with your family? Well, because my parents are first generation and spoke Punjabi at home and they learned English in school in India, but... It was not their first language. So at home, we always spoke Punjabi and my sisters and I all speak it, but it's definitely getting lost. Even now, when I go home for the holidays, we speak mainly in English and I don't think I'll be able to teach my kids because I'm not very good at it anymore. Well, that was going to be my next question. When you have kids, what are you going to do? Are you going to teach them the language or are you just going to teach them how to eat Indian food? <laughs> Honestly, I think I will try a little bit to teach them Punjabi and maybe expose them to some of the music, but I think food is going to be the one big thing that sticks with, <laughs> with us. 
really, these are just two stories about backgrounds, but in Canada, there are so many different stories. Yeah. And that's something that's interesting that in Canada, there's a lot of people like me who have a mixed background and are not really connected to that background. And so having a mixed background is not really anything interesting or special because many people are mixed up. They have lots of different backgrounds and it's okay. Yeah, it's interesting though because my family has only been in Canada for now 35 years, but I feel very Canadian. I was born in Canada and I find it interesting because a lot of people ask me, oh, where are you from? Well, I'm Canadian. And then I understand that obviously I look a little bit different. So they're asking where my ethnic background is from. Yeah, well, I love to know where people are from. And I really like that question because you often get a really interesting story. Definitely. I think your story is very interesting. All right. So now that we've discussed about our own Canadian identities, now we're going to talk about just the different cultures in Canada and how multiculturalism works, which is actually a really hard thing because... It's different depending where you go and people have different opinions on it. It's kind of a sensitive topic. It is. But the official version is that in 1971, Canada adopted a policy of multiculturalism. So that's where it became enshrined in the law that the founding people of Canada are the Aboriginals, the English and the French. But we are a very multicultural society and accept people from everywhere. And... I would definitely say that Canadians think of multiculturalism as part of their identity. When we think of being Canadian, we think of being multicultural and having a very diverse population and accepting people with all kinds of different backgrounds. Yeah, exactly. Even the simple question of what is Canadian food? Well, really, there isn't that much Canadian food because it's just a mix of all the cultures of where everyone came from. So Italian food is Canadian food. Polish food is Canadian food. Indian food is Canadian food. And if we ask a question like, what does it mean to be Canadian? I would answer, well, you have a Canadian passport. And really, that's all it takes. There aren't any longstanding cultural traditions. And really, it's very new culture. Yeah, and multiculturalism, I think, is the biggest thing. If someone asks me, what does being a Canadian mean? It means that we accept cultures from everywhere and that that is Canadian. So most of the newcomers to Canada usually go to the big cities. So those are the most multicultural places in Canada, generally speaking. Mm, Definitely. So places like Toronto, Vancouver, Calgary, Ottawa, Montreal, Montreal. of course, Mm -hmm. and Edmonton. Those are some big cities in Canada, and those are the most diverse places. Yeah, I was reading up about Toronto, actually, because I think it's fascinating how much diversity there is in that city. Did you know that there are over 90 languages spoken in Toronto? I had heard that a lot of different languages were spoken in Toronto. Yeah, it's Toronto is so multicultural. 38% of the people in Toronto are foreign born. Wow. So that means that more than 1 million people living in Toronto were born outside of Canada. Yeah, exactly. And even in terms of the population of Toronto, 48% percent of the people there are visible minorities and visible minority is a technical term really that people use to describe someone who is not white yeah that's the basic (laughs) definition because the majority of canadians that means most canadians are white And it doesn't mean that they're English. It doesn't mean that they're French. It just means that the color of their skin is white. And even the white people in Canada have a big mixed background. Yes. So I'm born in Canada. I'm a Canadian, but I'm still a visible minority because my skin is not white. So if we break down the ethnic groups in Canada, around 30% of Canadians claim to have an ethnic background from the British Isles. So from England, from Scotland, from Ireland. I always find that surprising that so many are from Britain because to be honest, I don't feel like I meet that many people who are English or Irish or Scottish. I don't know. 
I think in a lot of the rural communities of Canada, that's where a lot of them settled. You're probably right. So away from the bigger cities like Montreal, where we live. Yeah, I remember when I visited one of my best friends who her parents have a farm in Saskatchewan. Everyone there was from British descendants. Hmm. Interesting. So to be from Britain is the most common background that we find in Canada. And technically you're half from this group. That's true. (laughs) And next is French, because as you know, there is a large French population in Canada. And of course, in Quebec, the province we're in right now. Yeah. So that's about 25% of the population. And then after that, we have a category that's called other European. So it could be from any of the countries in Europe, like Spain or Portugal or Poland, like the other part of my family, or the Ukraine, anything. Yeah. And then the next part of the population is a mixture of Asian, African, Arab descendants, and that's about 6% of the population. And then we have a really small percent, only 2%, but those are the natives in Canada that are really the true Canadians that were here before anyone else came. Yep, the Aboriginals. And the last group is about 25%, which is people who have a mixed background. So technically, you're in that category. Technically, I'm mixed background. Yes, and I'm in the Asian, African, Arab category. Yeah, So that's where we fit in Canada. (laughs) Okay, so basically Canada is a country full of immigrants and it might not be perfect, but I think it's pretty fantastic. Yeah, we have our ups and downs now and again, but in general, everyone seems to get along pretty well and it really does make Canada an interesting place to live. Yeah, it's very unique walking down the streets and hearing a lot of different languages and having a multicultural society. I love it. Yeah. And especially in the big cities, being able to try all the different kinds of food. I have to say that when I go out to eat, it's so much fun to eat in ethnic restaurants and try all these different flavors and dishes that I've never tried before. Definitely. I agree with you. Mm -hmm. I'm hungry. Let's go eat something. (laughs) Canada really is a place where people can come and feel that they can still practice their own cultural traditions and be accepted at the same time. Yeah, we're really proud of our diversity in Canada. So we accept people from everywhere and all their different traditions. Okay, so I think that's good for today. Should we do a quick little recap? Yes. Well, first we started off by telling you our own stories about our backgrounds and what it means to be Canadian for us. Yep. And then we talked about multiculturalism in Canada. Right. And we wanted to share with you just how multicultural we are. Mm -hmm. That's true. Even look at the pictures on Facebook. (laughs) Very multicultural. (laughs) Yeah. So we hope you enjoyed this episode and we hope you learned a little bit more about Canada. And we hope you'll come visit us one day in our beautiful, diverse country. Yes. So remember to go to our website, culips.com, that's C-U-L-I-P-S dot com, because you can always become a member and then you get the learning materials, which is a complete transcript, detailed explanations, and even a quiz. And don't forget to say hi on Facebook. We'll see you later. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you.